Hola, I'm Movie Hanger, and today I will tell you about the science fiction movie Selfless. The old billionaire, a construction magnate named Hale, learns from doctors that he has reached the final stage of cancer and has about six months left to live. The businessman remembers a business card from the biogenics company Phoenix, which promises old or terminally ill clients a literally new life. Hale visits the company's office where Professor Albright tells him about an incredible procedure called shading, the transfer of consciousness into a young body. They have learned to grow clones, whose brains are empty and ready for the transfer of the personality of any, of course, wealthy client. The next day, the wealthy man loses consciousness right in his office, after which he wakes up lying on a medical bed with devices connected to monitor his body's condition. Hale bitterly realizes that his days are numbered, and each of them will be full of torment and pain, so he calls the professor and agrees to transfer himself into a clone. He is urgently brought to Phoenix's medical laboratory, where they inject a drug that stops the heart. Then they place the old man's body, as well as his future host, into installations that externally resemble MRI machines. After some time, Hale thinks that the consciousness transfer failed, but suddenly notices his corpse lying on the adjacent bed. Albright shows the man articles about his sudden death, then says that the procedure to adapt his mind to the new body will begin the next day. The doctor gives Hale red pills that will help the fresh body merge with the old man's consciousness, removing the side effect of hallucinations. Alongside physical training, the man learns his new biography, according to which he is a 35-year-old wealthy the unmarried man orphaned by his parents in a car accident many years ago. After several months, the man moves to live in a luxurious house under his new identity. Professor Albright gives him a supply of red capsules that he still needs to take. The hero, having received a new healthy body, begins to lead an active lifestyle, enjoying his second youth, getting involved in street basketball. At one of the games, he meets Anton, who invites him to hang out at a nightclub. The guy brings along his girlfriends, with one of whom Hale spends a passionate night in carefree fun as the billionaire prudently transferred a huge sum to an untraceable account. Several months pass. One day, the hero accidentally misses his daily intake of the red capsule. Suddenly, someone else's memories of military service and a little daughter penetrate his consciousness, after which he loses consciousness. Hale tells Albright about what happened, but the professor insists it's all hallucinations, an overlay of his own experiences about his abandoned family on fantasies, as well as childhood memories. Phoenix's leader advises the man to relax, take a week off at a resort, but strongly recommends taking two red capsules every day. Coming home, the hero searches through photos and finds a water tower shaped like a pumpkin, which he saw in these so-called hallucinations. After that, he convinces himself the structure does exist in reality. Hale decides to conduct his own investigation. He heads there, then enters a small house nearby, where he finds a photograph depicting a family, a young mother, a five-year-old daughter, and himself, although Albright insisted that his body is a clone grown in a laboratory. The homeowner, Maddie, who sees the hero, suddenly cries with happiness because she was told that her husband died on a mission. Suddenly, unfamiliar armed men enter the building, grab Hale, after which Anton, his supposed new friend appears in the living room, who is actually Albright's right-hand man. The hero asks how it turned out that his body is not a clone. It turns out that the technology had not reached that point yet, so they had to use real people. Mark, the homeowner, agreed to the shading procedure himself because he didn't have enough money for his daughter's treatment. The pseudo-friend hints to the man that they will have to eliminate Maddie, who found out about Phoenix's secret. Hale, unexpectedly, very professionally, takes down the guard, takes a revolver, wounds the second through the door, then engages in a fight with Anton. The enemy orders to burn the house, but the hero wakes the woman up, goes down with her under the floor, then eliminates the enemies with accurate shots. Maddie realizes that her daughter Anna is also in danger, so the fugitives head to the school, then hide in a motel. Hale googles a video of the late shading inventor, then realizes that he did not die. He transferred his personality into the body of his former assistant. The hero arrives at the inventor's supposedly widow's nursing home, where he learns that Albright also visits his wife, pretending to be her husband husband's former student. Hale asks the old woman to call him requesting to come, then, insisting on the arrival of the enemy, points a gun at him, demanding a new dose of red capsules. The professor admits that the drugs are needed to erase Mark's personality from the body currently inhabited by the main character. That's why Hale unexpectedly fights and shoots well. The instincts of a military specialist are still there. The main hero fights with Albright's guard, notices Anton's favorite amulet on his neck, whom he shot, then realizes that he moved into a new body. The 
the man takes the capsules from him, takes Maddie and her daughter from the dangerous place. Then he shocks the woman with the confession that he is an old billionaire who ended up in her husband's body, even though he was promised that he would be transferred into a clone, an empty physical shell. Hale arrives at his best friend Martin's place. He tells him his incredible story and asks for help. Suddenly, the main character notices that Anna is playing in the children's room with the son of his best friend. After this, he realizes that he needs to run because the boy died two years ago. It turns out, Martin sought help from the Phoenix Laboratory to save her terminally ill son. However, he was also deceived, being told that they used a clone. Martin quietly escorts Maddie and her daughter out of the mansion. Meanwhile, the hero in a tinted jeep exits through the main gates to trick the pursuers. During the chase with a shootout, Hale manages to eliminate enemies led by Anton, turning his jeep into a makeshift ram. Afterwards, the cars turn into a pile of metal. Hale reaches a roadside cafe where the meeting is scheduled. However, Martin informs him that the fugitives were still caught. He reveals that he managed to calculate the formula for the drug that supports implanted consciousness. Then he gives his friend a sheet with this very important information. Hale spends a day without red capsules to get a hint of the location of the secret Phoenix laboratory in Mark's memories. From fragments of memory, he recalls a warehouse with a notable detail. Carnival figures are stored there. The hero finds the necessary location, infiltrates the hangar, and eliminates the guard. Then, he sees Anton's body, who crashed during the chase, prepared for transfer to another host. Suddenly, the communicator activates, and Albright hints that Maddie's body suits a very wealthy old client. Hale shoots at the enemy, but the glass turns out to be bulletproof. Then guards enter the operating room. The doctor says that the hero's trained body, equipped with military skills, is perfect for his loyal dog, Anton. After these words, one of the guards stuns the man with a shocker discharge. The consciousness transfer operation is completed, the head of Phoenix security puts on his favorite amulet. He then learns where the hostages are kept and heads there with his subordinates. Entering the room, the man eliminates the thugs. It turns out the hero short-circuited the transfer device using a bullet he took with him. The thing is, the setup operates on the principle of an MRI, so having metal objects during shading is prohibited. Hale engages in a shootout with the guards and infiltrates the observation room from the other side of the bulletproof glass. There, Albright says that the hero's consciousness will vanish if Hale kills him, as he won't have the medicine. In response, the man reveals the antagonist's chemical composition of the red capsules, which his friend Martin uncovered. He then incinerates the astonished enemy, melting the armored glass with a flamethrower. The hero escorts Maddie and her daughter to a maritime port, where a yacht awaits them. Afterwards, he arrives at the office where his real daughter works. Introducing himself as a friend of her father, he tells her that Hale's last words before his death were about how much he loves and is proud of her. He then hands the crying girl a farewell letter. Several days later, a shocked Mark emerges in an unfamiliar hotel room. He sees a glowing laptop screen, then starts the playback. In the recording, the person who possessed his body for many months thanks him for it, congratulates him on arriving at the Caribbean islands and asks him to take care of Maddie and Anna, who is also there. The happy family reunites where they dreamed of spending their entire lives. Moreover, there is a huge sum of money in their account, gifted by the old billionaire named Hale. That's all for today. Subscribe and like. Have a great day.